situation of laying on of hands and the elders are not present, can this be, how will this be handled as far as the laying of hands? Let's read it. Let's get the chapter and verse. So this is the book of James chapter 5, uh, verse 13 through 14. Uh, as a matter of fact, in 15. It says, Is any among you afflicted? Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing songs. If you're, if you're, if you're happy, sing. Read. Verse 14. Is any sick among you? If there's any people sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church. Let him do what? Let him call for the elders of the church. Read. And let them pray over him. Read. Anointing him with oil in the name of the Most High. There you go. That's your answer. These steps are the steps that are to be taken according to the Most High. Right? Read. Uh, verse 15. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Most High shall raise them up. And if you have committed, if you have committed sins, they shall Another be forgiven. Another proof that sin is attached to sickness. Read that part again. It says, And the prayer of, of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise them up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. You see that? That's crystal clear. And by that forgiveness, it begins the healing process. All right? So anyone have any other questions concerning that? All right. All right. Let's get to the next point. Now that we've dealt with the doctrinal side of things, to understand what the doctrine is, all right? Let me show you, according to scriptures, a few things you would need to know Historically, now, these are some of the things that I, that, that, that some of the questions in which we received through email that I thought that I would answer and, and it would give base understanding so that you have a foundation. Like for instance, you have some people claiming that, well, how do you know who the 12 tribes of Israel are in the earth? Well. Even though that have nothing to do with the, the important part, which is the doctrine itself. We can prove who the children of Israel are. Number one, not only do, can we use the Bible, but historical records. Let me show you something real quick. And uh, we actually go into detail in the academy concerning these particular topics. But I'm going to just give you... Some, some, you know, because one lesson, like I have one lesson online that we did years ago called the loss, it's called the... Uh, 12 tribes of Israel. Yeah, it's, it's the 12 tribes of Israel, the lost tribes of Israel found. The 12 lost tribes of Israel found, something like that. To show you that we found the 12 tribes of Israel according to scripture. And I know some people out there try to relate that to... Uh, an old school under UPK saying that Ari and other people found out this and, and people are teaching their doctrine. That's not the case at all. Let's make this clear. Israel was not scattered in modern man's, in, in our modern time. There's no modern man on this earth that you're talking to today can state claim to give an understanding of who the 12 tribes are. The Bible show you who the 12 tribes are. Let's make that clear. Because there were some of those tribes in which he even went into. Even though he pinpointed all the people he pinpointed were Israel. But there was a few that he didn't go into. That he, that, that, that he didn't bring forth. So the, the people would like to tie information to man so they can tear down the man and therefore discount the doctrine. That's all ways of trying to discredit but what you can't discredit is the Bible itself here's the key thing you would need to know first of all hold this 
I'm going to just pull out a few scriptures for people that are fairly new. So that you run into some people saying, well, all the 12 tribes are just black people. They're just all black. And, they, and the Indian tribes and all these other tribes, the Mexicans, they're not Israelites. They are Israelites. And I'm going to show you. So as far as the Bible doctrine-wise, you'll understand when people are trying to move you off of the truth into some pro-black doctrine. Okay? Let me tell you, make this clear. Us showing who the Khazars are is not no black nationalist doctrine. Us showing that the Jewish people are not Hebrews are not black national nationalist doctrines. We're not on some kick to say that everybody's black. That has nothing to do with the doctrine of Christ. It's to proclaim truth according to the Bible. Okay? So we want to put that out there clearly. All right? So let's, let's real quick, let me identify the 12 tribes. More not, in a nutshell, the 12 tribes. And some people might ask, answer, well, what does it matter today? What does it matter today? Who cares who they are today? What is the importance of that? Let me attack that point real quick. And see if these things that we're bringing forth today on this Sabbath can be disputed. All right. Go to 2 Kings 17. Before the, the kingdom was split after Solomon, all 12 tribes lived in Israel together. You had what you would call a northern kingdom and you had what you would call a southern kingdom. The southern kingdom was called Judea. The northern kingdom was called Samaria. All 12 tribes were together. Where did they go? And how can you identify them today? I'm just going to bring out just a little, some little information to show you that the 12 tribes are the Hispanic people and the other people also, outside of black people. Outside of just what you would call dark Negroid people. You have to realize Jacob had more than just Rachel and Leah as wives. He had children by their handmaids. So all the children didn't look alike. Okay? So you can't look at it and say, well, if they're not looking black, then they're not God's people. Do you know that all people came from a black man and a black woman? Can we say that white people are not the, 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 the children of Adam and Eve because they're white and they don't have the same features as Adam and Eve? Doesn't make any sense, does it? It don't because the originators make all kinds. Okay? Ham, Shem, and Japheth, three separate nations, came from one man. So I'm saying we have to broaden our scope beyond black. And I learned that that's a thing that is part of our social ill, especially in America, because we saw everything we point to is because we were slaves. So even our ideology be, is minimized because of that. Okay? I don't have the truth of the Most High, and I don't have the understanding of Scripture because I was a slave. So we have to get out of that mentality that it's all about black people. You can teach the truth and let the truth lie where it may, be it black, white, or any other color. The truth will stand and you don't have to identify anything. Just show the truth concerning the Bible. Listen to me clearly. I'm going to show right now in a matter of minutes how you can prove that the Indians and all the tribes that was in the Americas before the Europeans were Hebrews and are Hebrews. Right? Go to 2 Kings 17 and 17. Let's go there. 2 Kings chapter 17, verse 17. Go ahead. And they caused their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire. 
and you use divination and enchantment. Talk about our people. We began to sacrifice our children to Moloch, following the gods of the Gentiles. Read. And sold themselves to do evil in the sight of the Most High. In the sight of the Most High. It says the sight of the Most High because the Most High set his sight on his holy land. Read. To provoke them to anger. Made, the, his, made their God angry. Read. Verse 18. Therefore the Most High was very angry with Israel. He was upset. And removed them out of his sight. He removed Israel. And Israel is what's called the Northern Kingdom. You got Judah and Israel. So it's called two separate names in scripture because the kingdom was split. The northern kingdom was called Israel. The southern kingdom was called Judea or the land of Judah. Read. Therefore the Most High was very angry with Israel and removed them out of his sight. Go ahead. There was none left but the tribe of Judah only. When it says the tribe of Judah only, it's not speaking of just the tribe of Judah. It's speak, Judah is the king. But Benjamin and Levi also stayed in the southern kingdom. Why? Levi were the, was the, were the priests. Eventually the priests fell from their stature and was made a tribe within Judea. So who was there? Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. These are predominantly the dark-skinned Hebrews. That stayed all the way up until the time of Christ. And then after Christ, 70 AD, the Romans waged war against our people and we ran into Africa. And we're, we were enslaved in Rome, was thrown in the arenas to fight lions and bears and become gladiators as spectacles for the Romans. Yeah, that's us. Right? But let's deal with the ones that came over to the Americas years before we even got on a slave ship. Listen to this clearly. Go ahead. And what's the date of this? 721 BC. We talk about almost 800 years before Christ ever came to the came on earth, before he was born. Right? Read verse 19. Also, Judah kept not the commandments of the Most High their power. Go ahead. But walked in the statutes of Israel which they made. And the Most High rejected all the seed of Israel, and afflicted them, and delivered them into the hand of spirits, until he cast them, or until he had cast them, out of his sight. And that was showing a future prophecy, that eventually Judah would be taken down and have to serve the Babylonians, the Persians, the Greeks, the Romans. And then be destroyed, have to serve in America. So those sins that our foreparents did in the land and sacrificing to other gods led to a dispersion in which the real people in the end times would not have their homeland, would not rule from their homeland. See that? Read on. Second Kings 17 and 21. For he rent Israel from the house of David. What did he do? He rent Israel from the house of David now because under David all the tribes were one. So now he left one for David which Christ would come through. Read. And they made Jeroboam the son of Nebat king. And Jeroboam drove Israel from following the Most High. So instead of having one king, you had two separate kings over Israel now. Jeroboam and Rehoboam. Rehoboam was over Judah. And, and Jeroboam was over now Samaria or Israel. So what happened? And made them sin a great sin. Go ahead. And here's an example of this. Right? We're serving the Most High God. And then we find out what the Gentiles are doing. And instead of dealing on Sabbath, we begin to sacrifice to the sun God Ra and worship on Sunday. I'm just giving you a, 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 a present day example of our people following the way of the Gentiles and therefore it led to their downfall. Now, following the sun in Sunday worship was instituted in Rome before Christ was born. You understand? That was pagan. Even before Christ. They just hijacked Christ's name. It's not even in the book that you have to follow Sunday worship at all. It's wrong. 
But yet, they hijack Christ's name, hijack the titles, and then say, well, this is about Christ. So that they can hide the fact that they've given you the same doctrine from which we fell. See that? Same thing. We look at what they're doing and saying, well, well they, they're no different between them and us. Let's go follow their gods. This is how we fell. That's com that should be common sense to you. The North American Indians didn't know, know nothing about no Sunday worship before they came. We knew nothing about no Sunday worship before they came. So it's the Gentiles putting this right back under the things from which we fell. And you wonder why we stay on the bottom? We're still worshiping and dealing with the things God was angry with. Listen to this clearly. 2 Kings 17 and 22. Go ahead. For the children of Israel walked in all the sins of Jeroboam. Go ahead. Which he did. They departed not from them until the Most High removed Israel out of his sight. That means he took Israel, which is the northern kingdom, out of his sight. His sight is on the land of Israel. Read. As he has said by all his servants, the prophets, so is Israel carried away out of their own land. Out of their own land, read. To Assyria unto this day. Now, you would read the scripture and say, well, okay, we can find now the 12 tribes, or the 10 tribes that left, that was in Samaria, in Assyria. Well, you can find some of them in Assyria. See, and that's why the powers that be are warring with them today. Because they're still fulfilling the takedown of Jacob. It's Jacob's trouble in the Middle East. They're coming and looking to destroy a diaspora of our people who were there, who were still left in that area. That's what the wars are about. There's no enemies to America to fight and try to do anything to them. All the wars, the Vietnam War, the Vietnamese didn't do anything to them. It was a continual war of the Romans to destroy the diaspora of our people who went to Asia. All their wars are aimed towards the lost tribes of Israel. The Bible calls it Jacob's trouble. It's the Romans against us. It have always been. But going back to my original premise, how do we know the North American Indians who were in the New World, how do we know that the Belikwa Taino Indians, how do we know that the Puerto Ricans, the, uh, uh, the Colombians, the people over there in, uh, in Chile, near Panama, Brazil, how do we know these people who, were rich, who, who eventually fell to the European powers? How do we know they're Israel? The people in Belize. How do we know they're Israel? The people in the South Pacific Islands, the Hawaiians, how do we know they're Israel? Listen to this clearly. Let's go to the Apocrypha now. I so happen to have an Apocrypha in front of me, the King James Version. And I know Christians don't want to read it, but listen. That's your prerogative. Understand that, that the, the Apocrypha is part of the 1611 King James Version Bible. You're not dealing with a complete book. I don't care what the authorities have told you about the book. Okay? It's in the Apocrypha. I have an Apocrypha right now with the King James Apocrypha in it. This is part of the Bible. And why did they take it out? Or oh, they claim that, oh, there was nothing inspirational, spiritual about Christ. Christ's coming is in this book too. They don't even read about it. But they lie to you so that you don't go into it and identify the people they are at war with. Let's see who they discovered. How did the North American Indians and all the tribes get from Israel through Assyria? to what we call today America. Second Edwards 13 and 39. Let's go. The book of Second Edwards, chapter 13, verse 39. Go ahead. And whereas thou sawest, he gathered another peaceable multitude unto him. He gathered another peaceable multitude unto him. Now, 
Ironically, who is it speaking of gathering a multitude unto him? It's Christ. This scripture is talking about the coming of Christ gathering a multitude back to him when he returns. Now you read about the great multitude which no man can number in Revelation 7. But you never go into all the tribes that's mentioned starting at the first verse of Revelation 7. There was a great multitude gathered unto him. Read. Verse 40. Those are the ten tribes. Those are who? Those are the ten tribes. Those are who? Those are the ten tribes. Well, brother, I thought the ten tribes, I thought the Israelites was done away with. Those are the ten tribes. Those are the ten tribes. Which were carried away prisoners out of their own land. Out of their own land, read. In the time of Hosea the king. Of the time of Hosea the king. That's Second Kings the seventeenth chapter. That's the biblical history, literally, of our people being taken out of that land almost eight hundred years before Christ. Read. Whom Solomon Nasser, the king of Assyria, led away captive. Read. And he made and he carried them over the waters. He carried them over the waters. And so they came into another land. And so they came into another land. Read. Verse 41. But they took this counsel among themselves that they would leave the multitude of the heathen. They would leave the place in which they were enslaved. And go forth into a further country. In a further country. Where neither, where never mankind dwelt. Where never mankind dwelt. So it was a land that was not known to Ham, Shem, and Japheth after the flood. The new world. Read. Verse 42. That they might keep there that they might there keep their statutes. Go which, ahead. Which they never kept in their own land. Go ahead. And they entered into Euphrates by the narrow passages of the river. Now let's give you the, the, the direction of them going around Africa through the Euphrates, eventually over the Atlantic. Read. Verse 44. For the Most High then showed signs for them and held still the flood. So they were passed over. That means the Most High made sure the waters were calm until they were passed over. Read. For through that country there was a great way to go, namely, of a year and a half. And it took them a year and a half to get there. Now examine this for a second. I just proved how those people got there to the New World before the Europeans ever stepped foot there. Now you prove to me how they got there. If they didn't get there according to how the Most High said. Oh, I, oh, they came through the Barren Strait. Another lie taught through universities to hide you. They didn't come through no Barren Strait. That's a lie. An institutionalized, institutionalized lie to hide you. So the best thing to do is just ignore this book altogether. <laughs> It's not spiritually inspired. It's just, there's nothing to see here. <laughs> see that? This is how they disconnect you from your book. And then they, uh, uh, what you, they colonize your mind through the Christian doctrine. Not the doctrine I've just read in scripture. Through the docile, what you would call almost sodomitish type of doctrine that makes you meek and weak and frail and make you bow to government intrusion or, or government authority. That's what Christianity is. It's no, it's no truth. So let's just ignore this information because it doesn't matter because God loves everybody. While they're while they just breaking their foot all off in you, telling you, okay, don't worry about it. God loves you. Just take this foot here. God, don't, don't push back because I'm Jesus. See, this is what they do. We, brothers and sisters, we bring forth truth to release the prisoners from their bondage. But, but listen, now it's to the point where even secular history, 
And the authorities no longer push up against some of what we're being taught now, what's being brought out. Now, it's our people that are now attacking Mexicans and others claiming, well, they're not Hebrews, they're not God's people. As if we, not, we haven't suffered enough. So it's deeper than just a slave ship. I know when you first seen that slave ship, you was like, man, I, I couldn't stay off of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. But now what? Every Hebrew in this earth know about Deuteronomy 28. But the question is, why can't we all come together? Why? Because that's not the doctrine. It's the doctrine that are separating all the Hebrews. The same way during Christ's time, there was a doctrine he was teaching, and it was the doctrine of the rest of the Hebrews. Same thing. Another point I wanted to make. Now that I wrote the second address 13 and 39 to show you the Indian, and I did that quick. Now to identify each tribe one at a time, that's a three-hour lesson we have on YouTube. You can actually go to the 12 lost tribes found. But just one point, I so happen to have in front of me the book that I pulled out while teaching the 12 lost tribes found by Ronald Sanders. This is a Jewish guy who found out that the North American Indians and other tribes in America was in fact the children of Israel. And his, his, original, his original conquest was to disprove it because there was rumor in Europe that the 12 tribes of Israel, that some of the 10 tribes went into the Americas. He wanted to dispute, to disprove the information and found out that the rumors were not rumor or innuendo at all. That it was true that the Indians and the tribes in Americas before the Europeans got there are all from the children of Israel. Now, the whole book is profound. I just want to get one part out of here real quick. The part where they came on the land and heard our people in the Americas speaking Hebrew. I think I marked it someplace here. You know where that at, Louie, on this? Grab it for me real quick. I had it marked with, it, with a sticky a long time ago, but get that for me real quick, if you don't mind. And also, I'm going to show it in the camera so that everyone else can see it with their own eyes. And I know, we got some Christian on here looking at it right now and saying, well, it doesn't matter. I know. But we're going to handle that too. Of course it don't matter as long as they got their foot on your neck. That's why it doesn't matter. And while they claiming it doesn't matter, they have other people over in Israel claiming to be you. Well, if it doesn't matter, then why did you go into the land in 1948? Why did you try to claim that it was the prophecies of the Bible that you were fulfilling if it doesn't matter? Christians never ask Jewish people these, these questions. Well, if it doesn't matter, how do you hold them up as the chosen people? Why, can, why is it you can find scriptures that try to fulfill them going into the land and them being restored back in Israel? But, never, but say it doesn't matter when we identify the true children of Israel. You got it? Mm -hmm. Give me the marking real quick. Uh, this is... Lost Tribes in the Promised Land, page 364. The Lost Tribes in the Promised Land, page 60, 364. Uh, 365. 360, 364 and 365, which is 364. Uh, it goes through, uh, okay, give me a few paragraphs out of that to show you what was written. And see, we do this so that you can't think that it's a black thing. Okay? It's not a black thing. Thing. These findings that this man did had nothing to do with whether or not he was white or rather the people that was conquered in America were people of color. It's a true thing. Okay? 
Read that there. It says, waving a high banner in the air, the Indian guide soon was greeted by a puff of smoke far beyond the other bank of the river. Go ahead. In response to a signal, the two men waited. Eventually, a canoe appeared bearing three men and a woman, all of them Indians, to the place where Francisco and Montezinos were standing at the water's edge. Francisco and Montezinos, we're talking about is some Jewish people who came over to the Americas. Now listen, to, this is before the land was called America. And listen to this clearly. I know everyone think that uh, Christopher Columbus was a Spaniard. See, they use these Spanish names to hide the fact that these were Jewish conquests paid by Jewish money. Do you know that Christopher Columbus was only in Spain five years before he eventually came to the Americas? He wasn't Spanish. Do your research, folks. Why do they hide their identity and then have themselves worship over society? Oh, it's Christopher Columbus Day. You think it's some white Christian holding a cross, Christopher Columbus. No. Okay, that's the deception. It was these people conquering the children of Israel, Romans, because that's who they are, conquering the Hebrews. That's what this is all about. But let's see what happened when these Jewish people seen the North American Indians and other tribes in Israel. I mean, in America, when they came over. And not only that, the people of our, the people that were there, the Hebrews, welcomed them. They didn't, let me tell you, the Indians didn't, didn't go to war with them until they began to slaughter and kill the people and destroy the children. That's when you hear about that cowboys and Indian, Indian story. But when they came, the Hebrews embraced them. Listen to this clearly. It says, uh, the woman got off and spoke to Francisco and an Indian tongue. Go ahead. That Montezinos could not understand. And the sister came off the boat and started speaking in what? And an Indian tongue that Montezinos could not understand. An Indian tongue in which Montezinos could not understand, read. Although he could perceive that he was being identified in the conversation. So they were speaking to him in another tongue. And he could tell that they were talking about him. Like, what is he doing over here? Who is this guy? Right? Read. She then turned to her male companions to explain the situation. Upon hearing her words, they rose and went over to Montezinos. And to utter, to his utter astonishment. To Montezino's utter astonishment. Said, Shema Yasha Allah. He said what? She said what? Shema Yasha Allah. Shema Yasha Allah. Uh, Ahaya, or uh, it says Adonai. Adonai, which is our Lord or our God. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Ahaya uh, Nawa, Adonai Achad. Ahaya Nawa, Achad. How is it that the same thing we said today, Hail Israel, the Lord our God is one. How is it a European is coming over to the Americas hearing the same credo in America if these people are not the Hebrews? See, I'm not only just putting this out there for those who, 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 who look to discredit it outside of Hebrews. There's a lot of our brothers out there who are claiming that the Mexicans and all these other tribes are not God's people when there's history to prove that they are. And some people claim, well, hold up, you know, there are big statues and of black people that was in Mexico in different areas to show you that the black man came there first. No. What you don't know is that there's areas of the water under the water, you got the city Atlantis. At one time, the whole earth was one body of land. So a lot of the statues you're seeing over there was, was cities to the gods before the flood. That when the earth broke off in places, those relics stood. Okay? <laughs> That's why. But when the scriptures tell you in Second, uh, Second Kings that it was a land in which no mankind dwelt. Believe me, before our people got there, before those tribes, those Indian tribes got there, no other people traveled to that land. 
they was able to find those statues that were there before the flood when the land broke off and the land of angels and what you would call the land of giants that sunk into the earth which is Atlantis that's why you have statues and all that's there that seem like man mankind couldn't make and, and, and all those things a lot of those relics were made before the flood okay hope you got some understanding there all right going into that so more. you got more oh, yeah. lawyer got some more bring it it says a, a brief conversation then ensued their common ancestral tongue as a matter of fact before that says they had recited in hebrew the fundamental credo of judaism of what of judaism you know he threw that in there mm -hmm. because there's no such thing as a religion of judaism mm -hmm. but he but what the jewish people are saying is that hold up they're saying things that we say let me tell you, Moses knew no religion as Judaism, okay? Christ knew no religion as Judaism. The children of Hebrew, Israel, in the Old Testament knew no such religion. Okay? Judaism is a concoction, really a, a, a Babylonian religion. That's what Judaism, it had nothing to do with the Hebrews. It's Babylonian. Let's make that clear. Okay? And what they do is they have, they have some of our artifacts and use some of our information within their Babylonian practices. But they, they have no respect for the Bible at all. Go ahead. I'm going to jump down. It says, they told him that they were themselves of the tribe of Reuben. Of the tribe of what? Of the tribe of Reuben. Of the tribe of what? Of Reuben. Of the tribe of Wu Reuben. Of the tribe of Reuben. And that the tribe of Joseph lived on an island nearby. And the tribe of Joseph lived on an island nearby. So not only did they identify themselves, they knew exactly where all their brothers was dropped off at, their brothers and sisters, when they came over the waters. The Most High allotted land for each of them, the same way when we came out of Egypt, we knew which places to place each tribe. So each tribe had land allocated for them in the New World before the Europeans got there. See that? They would make you believe, and this is what they were teaching in England, that they found some savages eating themselves and dealing with all types of madness, and that they have to come and bring forth progress or a more righteous civilization. See, this is see that, that that's the country that, that's the comp the company line they told. They have to first minimize the people they're looking to destroy. They must first demonize the people they're looking to conquer. Oh, look at this gold queen! But they're savages over there. Here it is. They got communication. They communication through smoke. They coming on boat, so they got travel. They're speaking in different languages where he don't even know the languages they're speaking. And he's speaking in a language they understand. That don't sound like savages to me. And then they're able to identify their brothers who are children of Israel. My brother Joseph is on an island nearby. What island? Puerto Rico. So we know that Joseph is who? Ephraim. Okay. And I'm saying this because a lot of people like to attribute the 12 tribes breakdown to some man that popped up and married, oh, that tribe is there, that tribe is there. This has nothing to do with man. The Most High, the Most High in Scripture identify each tribe and where they are. In the New World Order or the Romans, which are over the New World Order or the Club of Rome, have always been at war with the children of Israel. That's why the Roman Catholic Church came to destroy us with their new religion. They were Romans. They're the adversaries of our people. They are the bane of our existence, according to scripture. And if you don't know this doctrinal wise, you don't understand why they wanted to kill Christ, and you don't understand today why they're trying to kill you. See? Simple. 
Now, some people might say, you got something else there? Uh, one more come on, come on. Give me, give me everything you have, and then let's go to the next point and round it up. It says, Francisco told Montezinos all he knew about these people from his own traditions. Go ahead. His ancestors, ancestors, to their eternal shame, had indeed made war on them and persecuted them. Only the sorcerers of his tribe have perceived that they were a special people. They were what? A special people. That's Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Read. And had given them warning that they should be left alone. And they was given a warning that these are special people, and you better leave them alone. That wasn't enough for Esau, though. Mm -hmm. Notice he said that only the sorcerers of his of his people knew who they were. Only the sorcerers of his people what? Knew who the, who the Israelites were. Knew who the Israelites were. And the sorcerers told them, listen, these are the children of Israel that left Samaria. And I advise you to leave them alone. To show you they were traveling with witches and warlocks. This is what they do. It says, uh, the God of these children of Israel is the true God. He says what? The God of these children of Israel is the true God. And then the sorcerer came and said, listen, the God of these people over here in, in this land, their God is the true God. It's not these little gods we've been praying to. Read. They had said, and everything inscribed on their tablets is true. Everything inscribed on their tablets are true. And Joseph Smith, another satanic mason, came over and stole the golden tablets in which they translated the Book of Mormons and distorted that too. So the golden tablets were really in America. They stole the golden tablets. Read. At the end of days, they will be lords of all the... Oh, hold, oh, hold, oh, oh, hold up. <laughs> hold up I want you to read that hold up let's show the picture of the guy because he got the information so he must know and I know he told his family right he said what read it nice and slow at the end of days at the end of days they will be lords of all the nations of the earth they will be lords of all the nations of the earth that at the end of days these people will rule the earth and see and this is really why the new world order is ramping up their program and their eugenics against our people they know prophecy their sorcerers and seers have told them that we are their next leaders. Okay? Oh, you thought we were going to stay on the bottom there? Yeah, if it was up to you, we would have. But you knew it would come a time in which the Most High, the God of all gods that is spoken of right here, would begin to awaken his people without your help. If we would have waited for them to tell us the truth, we would have died like our grandparents died with no understanding like our fathers died they will never tell you the truth it was the most high through the time of awakening in Hosea 6 where it says in two days he will revive us it was his spirit that have came to have, have awakened us to the knowledge of him and gave us all the information to put it together read it one nation will come bringing many things to this land one nation shall come bringing many things to this land. And after we have all been provided for, these children of Israel will go forth from where they now are and reign. Go ahead. Over the whole earth as they once did. When these people leave this captivity, they will go back and begin to reign over the whole earth like they once did. See, and that's why they are ramping up uh, uh, homeland security and making borders up where you can't travel and all that. They know. They know that when you leave your construct, when you leave your slavery, when you separate from your programming, you connect to your father and understand your true mission. See? Starting to make sense, right? So some people might ask, well, it doesn't matter, especially a Christian. We're all God's people. Is that what you told the North American Indians? Is that what you told the Bleakwa Taino Indians? 
because you came bearing Cesar Bogier, the second son of Alexander the sixth Pope of Rome. You put up a known sodomite, a thief, a robber, a killer. The Bogier family was straight murderers. As a matter of fact, the movie The Godfather was made after memoirs of the Bogier family. Mm -hmm. Huh? So you might say as a Christian, well, it doesn't matter. I just love Jesus. Well, you don't love Jesus because you've been taught another Jesus. Does it matter? Let's see. What advantage then have a Jew? Mm -hmm. uh, Romans chapter 3, verse 3, or 3 verse 1. And I go straight to the New Testament where they claim it doesn't matter. Can you imagine going into a synagogue on a Sabbath and standing up while the rabbi is going through his madness when he's dealing with that tour? And you stand up and say, well, excuse me, everybody break out of here. Why? Because it doesn't matter that y'all are the Jews. It doesn't matter anymore. Christ came. Leave here now. Can you imagine that scene? It doesn't matter who the Jews are. Every Y'all can break down right now. It's, well, God loves all of us. Do you think you will survive that situation. <laughs> but here's, see, here's, here's the point of blatant racism that's taught in society. It doesn't matter when it's us. That's when it don't matter. Now that's blatant racism right there. We didn't create the racism, but yet you claim it's racist when we show the truth. The racism was teaching us we were someone else. That was the racism. You should have just told us from the beginning. Listen, your four parents, you know, they broke God's law. You understand? And now we're your big brother. We saw. And we're going to rule over you until a savior comes. All right? You are God's people. We're going to rule over you because your time is not now. It's our time. Listen, we would have accepted that. And that would have made perfect sense to us. We would have accepted that. But no, you told us in Christian church, if they start waking up, you have to have a doctrine. It doesn't matter. So by default, the people that's in Israel will be the Jews. So when the North American Indians begin to wake up, it doesn't matter. You want a casino? Black people start to wake up. Oh, you're the children of Israel. You're going to rule the earth one day. Oh, yeah. You want a music contract? You want a record deal? See that? These are consolations. Instead of you looking for the kingdom to rule like it's prophesied, you would rather take consolation from those who've enslaved you. Right? So when a Christian say it doesn't matter, let's talk about that real quick. Let's read it in the New Testament. Romans chapter 3, verse 1. What advantage then have the Jews? So here's the question. Was it, what is it the advantage of me knowing today that I'm a Jew? Is there an advantage to that? Because a Christian would tell me it doesn't matter. What advantage is it? Now, you, you brothers and sisters who have awakened out there, you're going to be posed with this scenario regularly where people in your family and everything is going to tell you it doesn't matter. You take them directly to the New Testament and ask them, what is the, what is, what is the advantage of me knowing that I'm a Jew? Paul said what? Or well, what profit is there of circumcision? What profit is there of circumcision? Circumcision is a law that was given to God's people. So what profit is it of knowing that you are the children of circumcision? Now, you have to understand what circumcision is. When a child is born, in eight days, a male child, his foreskin is taken off of his private. 
Because the Gentiles were shown to be unclean. If your foreskin is not off, it's unclean. You understand? So the Most High was showing forth a clean people opposed to those Gentiles who were operating unclean. So that was a physical manifestation of, of, of the law, of being clean or being a holy people different than everyone else. So what advantage is it of circumcision? Verse 2, much every way. Paul said much every way. Paul never said it didn't matter. So how, do, how can Christians go to Paul? When Paul says there's an advantage being a Jew. Read. Chiefly. Chiefly, that means chiefly, most importantly, here's the reason. Because unto them. Unto these particular people. Were committed the oracles of the Most High. The oracles of the Most High is the words contained in the Bible. That means out of all the people in the earth, the Most High gave his laws, statutes, and commandments to them. Which means you would not have a Bible if it wasn't for these people receiving the information that's in the Bible. <laughs> you understand? So how can you just take all of our rich work and say that we don't matter? When you're reading our information that was given to us by the Creator. See that? How can you say, see, but now they throw it in the way altogether now. First they watered it down with the NIV and the, all these other new versions. Then they say, well, you know what? That's not even read it no more. Throw it out. Why? Because they can't use it anymore now that we have stayed claim to it. As long as they can use it and enslave us and convince us that we were someone else in the book, oh, everybody should be Christian. Everyone should follow the Bible. But no sooner as we started realizing that it's not even talking about these other people. Ah, oh, well, the Bible was just written by men. Throw it away. It doesn't matter. Become an atheist. Listen to this clearly. Chiefly unto them, because what? Unto them were committed the oracles of the Most High. Unto them was committed the oracles of the Most High. That means unto them were committed the Bible. So it does matter. Because the Most High did not give his law, statutes, and commandments to any other people. He didn't give it to the Egyptians. He didn't give it to the Romans. He didn't give it to the Grecians or the Persians. Okay? He gave it to our foreparents. So when you say it doesn't matter, think about it. The Bible says that that's a false doctrine in itself. And what other people can break down the book but the people of the book? That's why you've been confused all your life. The people who become your authority don't even know the Bible. Or they're teaching a doctrine that was handed down by the Jesuits. We go into that in the academy, identifying the Jesuits and all the doctrines they introduced in the years they introduced it. And we give you all the references in everything and all the paperwork to do the research yourself. Sent right to you. Okay, so that you can research it yourself. Right? Read on. Verse 3. For what if some did not believe? For what if some did not believe? That means in the context of this scripture. What if some did not believe that the Most High have a chosen people? What if you didn't believe that? What if you were like Christians and say, well, it doesn't matter because we all God's people. But yet when you go into a black church, they'll tell you they're from the seed of Ham. If it doesn't matter, why did they teach you you were from the seed of Ham? They wanted you to stake claim to another race so that they can hijack yours. Coming together now? Starting to make sense? Read on. Shall their unbelief make the faith of the Most High without effect? Just because you don't believe, do that mean that the Most High's prophecies are not true? And see, that's a lot of us believe that. Well, if I can just block it out and not believe it, maybe it'll make it where it don't exist. 
No, it only don't exist to you. But the prophecies bear witness that we are the children of the living God. The Bible tells us about the slave ships and all those things. And I go into it not because of the core point of doctrine, but identification. And it's a step that we take to understand who we are to receive the doctrine of Christ. That means our whole doctrine it ain't the fact that we were black people on slave ships and the white man claiming to be us. That's not our doctrine. But it's a core step into breaking our programming to lead us to the doctrine of Christ so that we can readily accept it, not just from a religious aspect, but from a people's, a cultural understanding of Christ's coming. See that? So, it says here, for what if some did not believe? Shall your unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Read. God forbid. No, that means just because you don't believe, that doesn't mean that the Most High is not going to continue to show forth his prophecies and show his word to be true. Read. Yea, let God be true. God is, God is the word of God is the Bible. Let the word of God be true. Read. But every man a liar. And every man a liar. That means I can shut up and these words will still witness to truth. You can't, you can't say that the slave ships pertain to anyone else. That's written. That's not no man's idea or an interpretation. When the Most High says a man should go into cargo slave ships by the, and will serve their enemies, that's a clear distinction of one people on this earth. And you can't, you can't sit there and give your opinion and say, well, oh, witness slavery. Okay, you show me one point of history where all Chinese people were sold to black people. Where, all, where, 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 we, where someone went on the shores of China and sold some Chinese people to Egyptians. <laughs> you can't, right? Show me a history where black people went to the shores of where white people live and enslaved millions of them to build their culture. One instance of that? See, they like to say, well, there was indentured servants. Come on, man. Indigent servants is not the same as a curse when a whole people suffer captivity under another race. So by default, you must admit that the scriptures are speaking of us. Therefore, we say, let the most high be true and every man a liar. You can't lie against prophecy no matter how much you try to deny it. Just because you deny it doesn't mean it's not true. <laughs> you understand? You just don't want to accept it. And see, Christianity and other religions was set up to deny the truth. Systematic mechanisms, religious mechanisms established, set up so that you can reject the truth when it comes to you. Read. God forbid, yea, let God be true. Let the most time be true and every man a liar. Read. As it is written. As it is written. That thou mightest be justified in thy sayings. That thou mightest be justified in thy sayings. So what justify us? Not that we're anything great. The fact that we bear witness to the truth read out of the Bible. That's what makes us justified in our sayings because it's what the Most High said. See that? Quite simple. So we wanted to just bring forth or set some core doctrinal information in place so that you will understand how to weed through all the things out there and understand the importance of it and know, and listen, and know that people are going to go against the doctrine not because it's not true. Just because they can't accept the people who's bringing the truth. <laughs> you understand? So I wanted to put that out there too. 
All right. So I wanted to put that out there. Before I answer questions, there's one other point I wanted to talk about real quick. One moment, and then I'll answer any questions you might have. There's something I wanted to deal with on the historical side and the controversial side, showing you how government intrusion into religion led to unbelief. But I think I'm going to pick up that next week to show you that there's no separation between church and state. That's a lie or mirage they're putting out there in the system. Your government controls your churches. There is no separation. There's a doctrine that been instituted in mainstream, in all the mainstream religions, no matter what you are. And if it has allowed society to be, believe it or not, to become initiated into one Masonic order. See, we like to talk about the Masons who have taken an oath to follow masonry voluntarily, institutionalized masonry. But what you don't know is that Islam, Christianity, Buddhism, all of them also are low-level initiates into a Masonic order leading to a one-world religion. So you are also Masons too if you are a mainstream Christian. You just don't know it yet. Same thing as Muslims. Why? Because you must be a part of one of these religions to become a mason. Why? Because the groundwork is laid in place in all these other religions before you can actually become a mason. You must get the ground-based teaching first, which is your mainstream religious churches, your mainstream religious mosques, your mainstream Catholic churches. You understand? So it's an initiate to a higher level of masonry. But mainstream religion, believe it or not, is institutionalized masonry. And I'm going to go into that next week to show you how they instituted that. This way they had a pool of people they could choose from to operate under their Masonic construct. So I'm going to go into that next week to show you how they switched it from your from our connection and our obedience to the most high and turned it to the point where our obedience would be to government opposed to God in their Masonic construct. So I'm going into that next week. Um, one other point I wanted to make after speaking to Gabar earlier, we, we got a little breakthrough and, and I told him that I would mention it right now on another note. One moment.